Today we're going to be having a look at the Hasbro Black Panther movie series figures, and this is Shuri. Before we have a look at her vibranium equipment, her vibranium gear, I can tell you that Shuri stands at about five and three quarters of an inch tall. Yes, for accessories, she comes included with these vibranium gauntlets, which have a beautiful head sculpt on the top there. I look at it, actually, and I think something that a Thundercat would be wielding. Very cool, though. The extensions of these little uh, lightning bolts, so to speak, that come out from the, the gauntlet are of a softer, translucent plastic. But really do dig in the detailing there on the head sculpt, or at least of the, the cat head and the rest of the gauntlet here. I slightly tipped my hat. You can see that there's a big gap underneath each of the gauntlets and they fit right over top of her arms like so. I suppose you could have them on the top of the arms or you can have them running on the sides of the arms, but they seem to fit the best if you're actually putting them on the tops of the arms. Um, surprisingly as well, it doesn't make the figure too top heavy. The figure does lean a little bit to the front, of course, when you put the gauntlets on her arms, but she still seems to stand relatively well. We'll go ahead and take these off for a second. And having a look at the figure, uh, unfortunately, I find that Shuri is one of the few figures from the Black Panther wave that uh, that just unfortunately sit on pegs. I don't know if some of that may have something to do with the fact that not all, granted I'm going to stress that at the beginning of my statement, not all people p picking up action figures based on comic movies are boys. But I'm wondering if maybe the reasoning why she doesn't sell as fast as, say, the other two figures Perhaps it may have something to do with the fact it's a female character. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Head sculpt is passable. I don't really feel like it looks all that much like her. The costume's good enough, but I feel like the head sculpt lacks a little bit. The braids are a nice touch, as well as the long neck collar that she sports, which comes out to this uh, little collared piece that actually, actually comes out around her jaw area here. Paint is really clean, like the spots also all over her face, the deco that they've got all over her face here. But generally, it's it just doesn't look like her. That's the problem. That's the big problem. I guess to some extent, uh, the Black Panther really didn't. Well, the Black Panther wasn't unmasked, so it's very easy to pass that off as a as a more looking like the character from the movie. And unfortunately, she just suffers a bit by the fact that she has to have an unmasked face. Um, love the texture work that they've incorporated into her torso. It's these little small intricate things such as this that you really think it's a shame that toy companies, there's a sculptor that's designed this for a basic figure that may ultimately hit the clearance shelves. It's got to be disheartening at times to be a figure or toy designer. Maybe seeing your, your, your work, your craft hitting clearance bins, maybe where people aren't picking them up. I'm not trying to dismiss the fact that Shuri, you know, is likely going to be a, a peg warmer, but unfortunately that's kind of what I'm seeing so far. She comes with a, a shawl or a robe that's kind of uh, attached via a belt around her waist area here. Um, you could theoretically take it all, take this part off and just slide it past her waist if you wanted to. Um, if I just lift it up, you can see a little bit more of the uh, the outfit here, which is a nice mix of tribal and almost futuristic. I really do like the paneling and the, the little intricate layers to it. The colors are also really nice too. It's hard to describe the coloring of this. It's not quite brown. It's not quite black. It's not quite gray. It almost seems to change color as the height as the light hits it on different angles, and you can see again all the little intricate sculpts that they put into the plates. It's really such a shame. Just not even talking about Black Panther, but really figures across the board. 
so much time and effort gets put into making these, making the molds, casting the molds, making the packaging, shipping it to stores, shipping to distri distributors, and then shipping it to stores. And then uh, if the toy line doesn't do well, just think of how much, how many of those little individual steps that are involved getting to a final piece that a kid's going to be picking up in the store here. Uh, she does have pickles on the undersides of her feet, but really none of the basic Black Panther figures come with stands whatsoever. So even though she does have peg holes on the undersides of the feet, it's almost for no reason whatsoever that she doesn't come with a stand. Articulation on Shuri here, her head rotates all the way around. It actually sits on a ball joint, but the head doesn't really tip up and down, just a little bit. More the movement comes from rotating the head on the ball joint, but that's really all you're going to be able to get from it. Pleasantly surprised though, if anybody has picked up the basic class figures, that she does have joints on the arms. So you can move not only her arms out, but the other two figures from the basic wave as well. Uh, she does have a bend at the elbow. Let's also not forget, of course we can't forget the fact that she swivels her arm this way too. Hinge at the elbow. She has a rotation on the forearm. I always seem to, <laughs> I always do this. I hinge the arm out and then I always look at the other one. I don't know if anybody has noticed that. And this arm ends up always sticking out, so let's just fix that. And lastly, her legs hinge back and forth. They hinge more for forward, and I suppose if you had a vehicle, luckily this be softer plastic, you could theoretically put her in a vehicle. She doesn't, I think there were a couple of vehicles that were released for the movie line, but uh, there wasn't many. Unfortunately, though, she doesn't have the means to split her legs, so you can't move her legs outward. They only go forward and back. And they actually stop very abruptly uh, at her behind, which you normally for swivel-legged figures, we'll also detach that. That's actually one thing I forgot to mention. She does have a little snap here where you can detach this. So really, you don't even need to slide it off. You can actually just detach it from that little peg. Um, but like I was saying, though, the, uh, the legs on basic figures seem to very much abruptly stop. They're always like they butt right against the butt of the figure, and ultimately the figure's legs don't go really past that point. Not a bad looking figure. Um, I feel, again, she may be more relegated to peg warming the the pegs at the stores. Simply just put, because probably most people are going to be collecting the Black Panther and uh, Killmonger, they're probably very unlikely to be picking up Churi. She's not a bad looking figure, but I don't really feel like she looks a lot like the character. I've already had reviews of both Black Panther and Eric Killmonger completed from the basic line of Black Panther movie figures. So if you guys want to go back and have a look at those, I've got a playlist for you. I wanted to go back and at least have a look at Shuri because then I could have a look at the basic uh, releases of the Black Panther figures. Sure enough, and as I said during the course of this review, Shuri is unfortunately considerably pegging or warming the pegs at my local Toys R Us. Nobody really seems to be picking her up. And it's not to, again, say, I don't want to paint this across the board with one one stroke of a paintbrush by saying that all boys are the ones that are collecting these figures. I know there's a lot of girls that are also picking up these action figures for themselves, but I find female figures are always a tough struggle. Unless they're well-established characters, say, for example, a Princess Leia would sell well to Star Trek fans, or Star Wars fans, both male and female. When it comes to more newer movie properties, Female figures tend to be the ones that sit the most on the pegs, or uninteresting, uncostumed characters tend to also sit on pegs a lot. It's a shame because she's really a decent looking figure. I find she's more decent in the costume than I do think in the head. The head sculpt I don't really think looks a lot like her, but I really do have to appreciate the time and effort that companies or the artists that work for these companies spend on putting together these figures. As we looked at all the little intricacies that make up her costume, somebody would have gone in and designed that via clay, sometimes be the option, or a lot of times in a computer, but still, somebody is sitting down and designing all the little intricate areas that will eventually make up a figure that you pick up in store. So keep that in mind. Time to time, maybe when you go into a toy shelf and you're going into a toy store, going down the aisles and you're looking at the shelves, keep that in mind for some of the figures that are just kind of sitting there. Nobody's really picking them up. Maybe pick them up from time to time, just kind of look at them and think, wow, 
there's an artist that actually would have spent a lot of time and efforts designing this particular toy. It's not to say that you still have to pick it up. You don't have to pick it up. But just keep that in mind next time you see these toys in stores. Today we were having a look at the Black Panther movie. These were the basic class figure line. And this was Shuri. A figure I didn't do before. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Many more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.